I'm a man, I could stand alone. I'm on my own on these roads without a hand to hold, trying to control this globe that I'm standing on. But it keeps spinning on, and I keep sinning on. And on, I'm a man, I could stand alone. I'm on my own on these roads without a hand to hold, trying to control this globe that I'm standing on. But it keeps spinning on, and I keep sinning on. And on, look, have you ever felt your soul broke? Down on your luck, empty pockets, no hope. Surrounded by doubt, clouded in fear. Your happiness lost, ain't found it in years. The wind blows despair, you shower in rain. Flooded in adversity and drowning in pain. Have you ever reached out for help and no one was there but self? Nobody cared, you're all by yourself, they left. Have you ever been so scared you ain't wanna move? Cause you knew if you moved there was another bruise. And them chains that's attached to your waist and them weights gonna keep you in the same place anyway. It's hard to carry on when you've been counted out and your lights being dimmed by shadows of doubt. But I know that there's a way I can make it out. And I know that there's a name I could call out. What's that name, y'all? Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> All right, so look, my name is Gabriel Cannon. Uh, Pastor told you I've been here. I appreciate it. So, like I said, today, we're the last few hours of um, 2023. And so my message is, he, behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. And I'm going to start with the story of Joseph. We know, how many raise your hand? You know the story of Joseph. Who know the story of Joseph? If you don't know, I know there's some people tuning in in Los Angeles. Y'all don't know Joseph, so I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to tell you about him. So Joseph, he had 12 brothers. He was the youngest, the favorite, right, out of his father's, out of his father's boys. Not even that they just knew it, his daddy made it obvious, right? Daddy was the type dude, like, yo, this is my favorite. They knew it to the point they said they hated Joseph, right? His daddy gonna go make him a colorful jacket. It wasn't no black and white jacket. He made him a colorful jacket, right? Brother put on the colorful jacket. His brother seen him, realized, like, yo, pops messed with him more than he messed with us. We hate him, right? So there's favor on Joseph's life favor from his father right and because of his favor his own brothers hated him right you could kind of read in the scripture please read in the scripture the story of Joseph if you haven't Joseph was kind of a little tattletale right <laughs> you, you gonna snitch on him quick right and so his daddy knew that so his dad would always send him to go check on the boys yo go check on your brothers bring me back a report let me know what they doing right Joseph for sure, faithful snitch, I'm just joking, he was a faithful, <laughs> he was faithful to his father, right, and so he went out to the field, his brothers went to go feed his uh, dad's sheep in the uh, pastures, his dad told Joseph to go check on them, right, go, go check, check on the, um, check on your boys, report to me, let me know what they're doing, Joseph goes out there, right, they see Joseph coming, Oh man, here he come. How many of y'all been at work and just, here he come, somebody came, here he come. Right, like, oh man, here, that's how they felt about Joseph, but it was more, it was hatred. I hate him. Not because of something he did, because of the favor over his life, they hated him. Oh man, here he come. One of the brothers said, what are we gonna do? Should we kill him? Like his brother. They weren't playing, because if he was playing, the Bible would have showed us where they laughed, LOL, laughed it off. One of his other brothers, they trying to, yo, we with it. They was with it. He had a brother named Reuben. Reuben was like, man, maybe we shouldn't kill him. We don't want the blood, <laughs> you know what I mean, on our hands. Throw him in the pit. Long story short, they threw him in the pit. They sitting down, they eating. And so it was like, man, we gonna get in trouble for this. Like he in the pit, he's hollering, brothers! You know what I mean, the first 10 minutes, brothers! You realize, like, where they, <laughs> where they at? Like, they not playing, it's not a joke. They know if their father realized that they threw this boy in the pit, yeah, you got something to pay for. What we gonna do now? We done dug ourselves a deeper hole. What they do, they say, man, maybe we should take his jacket, smear some blood on it, pretend something ate him. I don't know, they trying to figure it out. A band of people came and said, you know what we gonna do? We gonna sell him. Sold this brother, his own brothers, right? Sold him into slavery. Right? He a slave now. <laughs> That's his little brother. They didn't care. They sold the boy into slavery, right? And so uh, 
after, after Joseph ends up in slavery, he ends up at the chief's house, right? He's at the chief's house. This is not the pharaoh of the land, but it's the pharaoh's like right-hand man. He got dominion over here, right? And so Joseph, he ends up at the chief's house. Once again, Joseph has favor, favor over his life. The chief elevates him. He got all the keys. When the chief leaves, he locking, turning lights, well, blowing candles out. He want to turn the lights off. But um, you know what I'm saying? He got all the control over this house, his master's house, because of his favor, right? The master's wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> master's wife. She see him. Now, what is she seeing, though? What is attracting her to Joseph? It's his favor. You see your husband giving favor to this man, right? He elevating him, admiring him. She's starting to admire him, too. Look at them triceps on him. You know what I'm saying? She's starting to admire the brother, too, right? She tries him. It says in the Bible, if you read, that it seems like it was more than one time. You know what I mean? It seemed like at first there were some people around, and she said something, and he kind of did a little spin move and played it off, and you know what I mean? But to the point it says that nobody was around. She tried him. She said, come sleep with me. She aggressive. She was from New York or something. <laughs> she, she was aggressive. Come sleep with me. Right? <laughs> come on. <laughs> so it's like... It's obvious this brother had no choice. It's either, but, but look at the, the, the box he's in. If he do this, now he in this house, he in trouble. He's going to have to keep going and seeing, right? If he don't, what, what Joseph ends up doing, he ends up fleeing. He's running. What's the dude, Joe, Justin Mayer, what's his name, that was running down from the, y'all ain't see the closed caption TV? They said, yeah, yeah, him. Just like him, he was running. They got it all on video. <laughs> But so Joseph, he ran, right? Ran from this lady. Like, man, I'm not having it. I'm not doing it. I'm faithful to God. The lady get mad. She get mad. She actually grabs his jacket off of him. So now she got proof in her mind, right? She got his jacket and she screamed. The workers come in. She accused him of trying to rape her, right? Right? It's a crazy story. Now, this brother, brother, son sold him. In the slavery, he done got elevated. He feeling good. Like, man, I, yo, I'm, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job. Now he in another situation. Now he's being accused of trying to rape the master's wife. The master here, buddy, he gets so upset, he throws his boy in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the prison. He throws him in the prison, right? Once again in his prison, time goes by. God's favor is on Joseph's life, right? Completely on his life, right? God's favors on him. He, the prison guard elevates Joseph. Joseph, you the man, the same way. I don't care what situation you in, God's favor is going to go with you, right? I don't care if you're in the prison, you could be in the courthouse, his favor is going to be with you. So look at Joseph's attitude. So he was elevated. So for the prison guard to elevate a person, to have favor for a person, he obviously didn't come in here like, God. You know what I mean? He had to have some type of hope some type of joy for me to have favor on a person who's in jail, right? And then to elevate him, right? So what happens? He's in there. He's serving his time. Time goes by. Pharaoh, remember, uh, Joseph was in the master's house. Pharaoh's the man. You know what I mean? The big dog. So Pharaoh, he got mad one day. He sends his butler <laughs> and his baker, right, to the, to the prison. He sends them to the prison, right? Joseph's been down there. They link him up with Joseph. He'll watch over you. Time goes by, and these two people wake up. And they wake up, and both of them the same night, the, uh, the butler and the baker, they have a dream. Right? How many of y'all had a dream? How many of y'all who, who feel God's giving you a dream? So they have a dream, right? They have a dream. They wake up. Joseph goes in there, he sees something wrong with him. Like, what's up with y'all? What's going on? What's wrong? They like, yo, you know, we had these dreams. There's nobody to tell us what it means. Joseph tell him, isn't God the one who interprets dreams? I got you. I'm God's man, right? Tell me the dream. The butler go first. Man, yo, I had this dream, right? It was a dream that was one vine. The uh, three branches came from it. From the branches, grapes budded out, right? He said, I seen a hand over Pharaoh's cup squeezing these grapes and gave him some wine. The end. 
Joseph's like, I got you. <laughs> I got you. He go consult God. He comes back. Listen, man. Basically, your dream is saying that God, in three days, the branches mean three days, it's three branches. God is going to restore you and put you back in your position. Everybody say, hallelujah. He starts skipping, doing his thing, right? The baker like, oh, snap, we got some good news. We got some good news. I had a dream too, remember me? He said, he told his dream, right? He said, man, I had a dream too. There was three baskets on my head, right? It was full of baked goods. And then some birds came and flew, right? And they was eating the baked goods. Tell me what that means, brother. It gotta mean something good. Man, Joseph was like, brother, let me tell you what that means now. But let me remind y'all, before I tell you, whichever one of y'all get out of here, please tell Pharaoh to remember me. Remember me. <laughs> like, I'm going to use my favor, my gifts, but you know what I mean? Don't forget about me, right? He tells him the dream. Brother, that means in three days you're going to die. <laughs> you, it's a wrap. God is going to cut off your head, and then he's going to hang you in front of all the people. Oh, Lord, that's what he said, ain't it, sister? That's what he said. <laughs> And say, so, yeah, I'm going to cut your head off, and I'm going to hang you in front of the people, right? And when I was reading this, it's like, because the next, in three days, Pharaoh had a feast. But he didn't have a feast for his family. He didn't have a feast for the chief. He had a feast for all his servants. So when I read that, it's like, man, Pharaoh trying to make a point. Pharaoh have a feast for his servants. They eat. They feel good. He called the uh, butler up. Come here. He called a butler. The butler come. He said, y'all remember him? Like, yeah, we remember. Man, I'm giving him his spot back. Man, you are blessed. I'm giving you your spot back, baby. You're good. He restores him, right? You see the dream come true. The butler back over there pouring the wine like he was, right? I'm back, baby. You feel me? <laughs> the um, baker like, oh, shoot. Pharaoh point him out, come on. No, no, no. Come and you. Come here. He comes up. He called this little henchman. He chopped the man's head off and hang him like he said he was gonna do, brother. Hang. And they and he killed him, right? <laughs> he dead. The dream come true. Shoot. <laughs> the, the butler's so traumatized, he totally forgot about Joseph, right? Like, man, I ain't saying nothing else after that man's head came off like that, right? Him, I ain't Joseph, nothing. I'm going to go do my job. Man, they say two years pass. Now imagine being faithful. Joseph hasn't done nothing wrong since he was a child. I was my daddy's little snitch boy. Like, what y'all was trying to do the right thing, right? I got sent to us, slowed into slavery. Now... I was at my master's house, the lady accused me. Now the dude forgot about me. Two years went by. How many believe God is faithful? Y'all believe? Two years go by, right? Two years go by and Pharaoh has a dream. Pharaoh has a dream. <laughs> and Pharaoh has a dream about these cows, right? So seven, in Pharaoh's dream, seven big old fat, juicy, steak-looking cows walk up, moo, moo, right? Seven of them, there's a lot of moves. Moo, right? Seven more cows come up. These cows, sick, they got a little limp on them, right? Hey, these cows don't even say moo, they just say, mm, mm. Right? <laughs> these cows, they just... <laughs> and so these, but the crazy part is, the little sick cows turn and they eat the fat cow. All right, all right. right? Pharaoh wake up, the heck no. Sick boo, they, what was that? He goes back to sleep, he has another dream. It's, it's seven stocks of grain, big juicy stocks of grain, like we could eat that for sure. Then seven little sickly little grains come. The little sickly grains turn and they eat the healthy grains. Like, Pharaoh wake up. He tripping. 
He called all the magi magicians and the weird wise guys of the land, the wizards, um, the Pokemon players. He called everybody, right? He called everybody, right? Like whoever can figure this out for me, you know some magic, you got a trick, something, right? right? So he called all of them. But the thing is, if one of these dudes interpret this dream wrong, you dead. <laughs> I mean, you bet not give Pharaoh no misinformation. So when Pharaoh tells his dream, ain't nobody bold enough to step up. Ain't nobody got the power, <laughs> right? Nobody got the power. So this, this, this butler, he remembers. Yo, that was this dude. Pharaoh, remember when you threw me in the prison? Yo, that was this dude who told me exactly what was going to happen. He interpreted my dream. He's still in prison. Pharaoh was like, where is the man? Bring the man. They go get the man. Give him a haircut, make him look right. He about to go before the Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh goes to him like, yo, can you help me interpret this dream? He goes to Pharaoh. He tell, Pharaoh tells him the dream, and Joseph interprets the dream. Joseph said, man, listen, the fat cows and the fat grains, they the same thing. Them little skinny mm, cows, <laughs> right? And them little skinny grains, same thing. What it's telling you that that's going to be seven years of prosperity, but then it's coming seven years of famine, right? Seven coming. So what you need to do, Pharaoh, you need to find you a man who can help you during these first seven years. You need to store up grain that's going to cover you for these next seven years. So find you a man. He said, I called them all. They couldn't do nothing for me. <laughs> you the man, right? Because he called all the magicians, the wise people in the land. He called everybody. You got to be the man, right? So now, <laughs> in the scripture, it says that Pharaoh elevated Joseph, gave him a ring, dressed him up. Dude got gold chains on. He looked like the Egyptians. Remember, he's a Hebrew, right? But he got all the garbs on, everything he need. Pharaoh actually tells him, there's, after me, you second in command. There's nobody's voice other than mine that could <laughs> oversee yours. So out of the whole land, the whole world, the second in command is now Joseph. So how did he get here, right? <laughs> how did he get here? So let me, let me just finish. Uh, what happens was the seven years, the seven years come, and then the famine comes. For seven years, Joseph has been working, been doing his thing. The famines come. Over in Egypt, remember his brothers, they older now, they got families. It's been a long time. Joseph, a grown man, right? So they need to get some grain. They come to Joseph. Just like when Joseph was a little boy and they seen him from afar off, Joseph sees his brothers. When his brothers seen him from afar off, they plotted to kill him, right? Let's figure out how to get rid of him. Let's, let's figure it out, right? He's seen his brothers coming. He's preparing his heart. I don't know them like that. I ain't seen them in a minute. How many of y'all got them friends you ain't seen in a minute? Y'all used to be cool, but he been to jail before? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But so, uh, and so he comes, he, he comes, his brothers comes, they ask him for grain, right? They ask him for this grain, and uh, Joseph kind of sets them up. He's like, man, I think y'all spies, man. I really think y'all spies. They're like, nah, man, we're not spies. We're not spies. Um, I got a, it's 12 of us. One of our brothers died, and I got a little brother at home. He said, you got a little brother at home. Remember, that's David. I mean, that's Joseph's full brother. They got the same mom, man. He said, man, I don't believe y'all. Leave one here. Y'all go get him, right? Bring him back. <laughs> Bring him back, right? Long story short, they go back to their father. They, they convince him because their father, like, man, I ain't having that. Something already happened to one of my boys <laughs> messing with y'all. Like, I ain't about to send him. They make a promise. Dad, like, let me, let me take him. I promise. I'll bring him back. They take the brother. They show him to uh, Joseph. Joseph weeps a little bit. That's his little brother. He feeds him. He treats him right, but he treats the little brother. He gives him seven times more, right? And so he sends him off, but he sneaks one of his gold cups in their in they bags. They leave, <laughs> right? He sends his people to go get him. It looks like they stole and stuff. Long story short, Joseph reveals himself. I'm your brother. I'm your brother. It's me, right? It's me. They think they're going to die. They know what they did to Joseph. 
Long story short, Joseph shows them the heart of God, right? He shows them that there's no hard feelings. Uh, there's actually the scripture, uh, where did it go? In Genesis, give me one second. Uh, thank you, thank you. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, where is that? All right, basically, <laughs> basically, he, tell, he tells them, like, yo, I'm not God. they like, man, you're not going to kill us? You're not going to? And so basically, he tells them, man, I'm not God. It's what you guys meant for evil, God meant for good, right? God meant for good. So I just wanted to give y'all an overview. So my first point with Joseph is to understand your position. So the, the message is all things are new. All things are becoming new. So for things to become new, we fir must first understand our position, right? First, we got to understand that we're not God. We want to get everybody back. We want to, oh, they wronged me back in the day. But we got to understand that we got to let God deal with that. You know what I'm saying? We got to let God handle that. We got to understand the difference between <laughs> Turning the other cheek. Jesus said turn the other cheek, right? To turn the other cheek. Think about that. He ain't say, uh, he, he said turn the other cheek. What do we say? What's like our normal saying? What would we say? We are more, other than Jesus, I think we probably more like Tupac. <laughs> right? So if Jesus say turn the other cheek, what Tupac say? I ain't a killer, but don't push me. Right? That's kind of our mentality if you think about it. I ain't a killer, but don't push me. I, I don't cuss, but if you try, I might cuss you, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm saved, right? But if you try, try Jesus, don't try me, right? <laughs> That's kind of how we feel as believers. But Jesus say to turn the other cheek. So if somebody hits you, like, hey, man, you know, surrender that. It's hard, I know. You know, we try Jesus, don't try me. So first we got to understand the difference between turning the other cheek and I ain't a killer, but don't push me. So <laughs> to walk in newness, we must be able to decipher God's intentions versus man's intentions, right? So if we look at Joseph's life, man's intentions, from the beginning, from the beginning, man intended, his brothers, they intended to kill him, right? They intended to take him out, right? That was man's intention. But if they didn't throw him in that pit and sell him into slavery, he would have never got to the master's house, right? All right, all right? He would have never been there because man's intention, they wanted to wipe him out, but he ended up in the master's house, right? He did what he's supposed to do. He walked in his favor, right? But then this woman won't him because of his favor. So her intention, her intention was to be with him, right? And then if not, it was to get him killed. But so he moved from the slavery now he's over the master's house, right? Now he gets thrown in prison. But if he didn't go get thrown in prison, he would have never met the butler, right? And the baker who worked for the Pharaoh. So he almost had to be going through that turmoil. He almost had to be accused wrongly, right? So all things work together, right? So everything that happened to him was God. So we gotta understand the difference between God's intentions and man's intentions. All things work together for the good of those who love Christ, right? God has taken you through things to be someone's answer. Everything that God took um, Joseph through was to be somebody's answer. Everything he took you through, I know we heard in the church, your mess become your message. Your test become your testimony. Um, your jail cell become whatever <laughs> right <laughs> right like but your like your tests become your testimony all things work together because imagine like with me i you know in my normal life i do youth mentor i'm speaking to these kids right you know what i'm saying i'm, I'm having dialogue with these kids but if i didn't go through some of the stuff i've been through you know if i didn't be where they have been where they were you know it w i wouldn't be able to explain it to them right so we got to understand the difference between man's intentions and God's intentions, right? There's another guy. I heard Pastor Carter talking about it earlier, Noah, right? In Noah's story, what was going on in Noah? 
Remember, we're saying all things new. All things new. With Joseph, it's how we look at relationships. How do we look at relationships? We got to look at relationships like Joseph did. There's people who wronged him. People who did him wrong, but he forgave him, gave, him, gave it to God, and was elevated in all relationships, right? So with Noah, what was happening? What was being made new? The whole earth, right? The whole earth was being made new. God came to Noah and said, listen, man, the, the seas on this earth is corrupt. I need to do a new thing. So I need you to take your family. I need you to build an ark because I'm destroying all of this, right? I'm taking it all out, right? So imagine being Noah. That means every nail that Noah nailed in that boat, he was letting go of his past, right? Because if you've accepted that, all right, God, it's going to flood. They're going to die, <laughs> right? And you're building this boat. You kind of, you're dealing with it. So every nail, like, dang, that go my first grade teacher. Dang, that old neighborhood that I grew up in. That's going to be wiped out. Dang, all of that stuff that I used to be, the candy store, the, everything. So with every nail that Noah was putting in the boat, he was letting go of his past. Say, all things new. Y'all still with me? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, um. God was even wiping out the children, right? God said, your family is going to be saved, right? But I'm going to wipe out these children. I mean, think about that. And the question I would ask you is, are you okay with what God is killing? Right? Because there's some things in your life that probably needs to die. And we're trying to walk in newness, right? We're trying to walk in newness. But if God said, I'm going to wipe out all the children, would you be okay with what he's killing? If God say, I'm going to take away this addiction, would you be okay with what he's killing? You know what I mean? You think about the children, but you got to think God knows all things. So imagine the Hitler baby, when Hitler was, when Hitler was a baby. God knew that that's going to be Hitler, right? He knew this, is gonna, this baby right is cute. That's going to be Hitler, though. So, you know what I mean? God's foreknowledge, you know, they say back in Noah's day in Genesis 6, they say the angels was coming down and mating with the daughters of man. So this DNA was a little corrupted. There was some things that was unnatural. There's, there's this little mix. It's not fully human. So I might need to wipe it out to make all things new. But what if you babysitted that little half breed thing? You're going to be like, you know, don't get, nah. You got to be, so the question is, are you okay with what God is killing? There's a man that came to Jesus, right? There's a man who came to Jesus and he said, Father, I believe you. I, I, I love you. I want to follow you. But let me go back and bury, and let me go bury my pops, Right? Jesus looked at me and said, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. He's saying that this is dead. Ain't nothing we can do here. There's nothing alive here. There's no movement. I can't work here. It's dead. I'm a God of the living, right? So are you okay with burying what's dead, to bury it? Are you okay with what God is killing, right? You cannot embrace the new when your heart is still attached to the old, right? So imagine getting in a relationship. This person is perfect for you. God brought this person for you, right? But you still talking about that little feeling so-and-so done gay, right? So you, 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 you can't embrace what is in the new if you don't let go of the old. We can't embrace what, what 2024 has for us if we still holding on to hurt from 2023, to pain from 2023, right? So <laughs> you can't embrace the new when your heart is in the old. Imagine how Noah felt. There's people outside banging on this boat. They dying, they screaming, right? They, they, they. Imagine if you say, can we just go save one? and open that door, or try, right? Tried to open the door because in the Bible it says that, that God shut the door. 
right? So are you okay with what God is killing? And are you okay with the door, okay letting God close the door? Because let's be honest with, let's be honest with ourselves. There's some stuff, because we are in this fallen flesh, we are in this body of flesh, right? Until we meet the Savior. So it's kind of hard to let go of some of the things we love. It's kind of hard some of the relationships that just been with us since we were to let those things go, right? So in Noah's, we see that it took God. God had to come and shut this door. Noah had to be okay with it. Y'all in the the boat, right? So are you okay with letting God uh, shut the door? Sometimes we attach ourselves to identities that's not of God, right? And we got to let them go. I know us as a community, sometimes our, our blackness be in the way, right? Sometimes our, you know what I'm saying, we be so pro-black that you ain't pro-Jesus, right? You feel me? We be, we be so woke, you know what I'm saying? We be so woke that we, we ain't in our word, right? We just woke and we following you know, Black Lives Matters and shout out to who, but we about this word, right? That's, that's what we doing, you know what I mean? Sometimes we can be so attached to our culture, our ideas, our traditions, our fraternities, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, by what they do, like to where it's like, we're putting these things before God. Like I said, our traditions, our relationships, um, So are you okay? And you have to ask yourself that. Are you okay with what God is killing? To not turn back. We also see a story in the Bible where somebody turned back. And what happened? La mama turned into stone. (laughs) Right? Right? Lot's wife, right? (laughs) She she, she, was leaving. Angel came to get him out the city. She just turned back for a moment. And she got stuck there. That's the significance of the stone. She's stuck. She can't move. She can't move forward into the promise. So don't turn into stone in 2023 looking back, saying, yo, but what about, yo, but we got to keep our eyes forward into the new. Say all things new. new. Right? So we got to check our heart posture. We got to check our heart posture completely because some people be faking. Let's just be <laughs> real. Some people be faking. For example, what I'm saying, check your heart posture. It's like, let me get a good example. It's like, a, sorry, sisters. It's like a woman saying, oh, I'm celibate, right? And she, she, she's a good looking woman. I'm celibate. I'm sacrificing this for God, right? She, she ain't doing it, right? You can respect it. But compare her to the woman Thomas on. I ain't going to the club no more. It's like, you couldn't get nobody out the club anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that ain't a real sacrifice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't really, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, one of y'all making a real sacrifice. One of y'all ain't really, you know. So to check our heart posture, right? <laughs> y'all, that's a shame, New Reds. Why y'all? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm saying, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, this person is not really sacrificing. You know what I mean? You got to do some real inventory and making sure you're putting real things on the altar and you're not just going through the motions, right? So that shows heart posture. You know what I'm saying? That's the heart posture that Joseph had when his brothers, you know what I'm saying? Um, when the waters dried up, this blew my mind, y'all follow. When the waters dried up, somebody just... Tell me, what did Noah send first? He sent what, a dove? Not the dove first. What he sent first, y'all? Who said that he sent the raven? Think about it. It's flood. It's water everywhere. Water everywhere. Why would you send a raven? What is the raven? What does ravens eat? Mainly dead flesh. So for Noah to send something that eats dead flesh, it shows that his heart posture was already out of the past. It's dead. You can bring me the flesh back and it's confirmation. I don't care if it was my school teacher little leg or what it was. He sent a raven. The fact that he sent this raven 
shows that his heart was pushing towards the future. Bring me some flesh. If there's some flesh out there, I'm even willing to see it. I'm willing even to look face with what you killed and say, yeah, it's dead, right? He sent a raven. Um, like I said, it showed his heart posture. He, he, ravens eat the flesh. But if it resurrect, if it resurrect in your life, if the addiction resurrect, if that 2 a.m. phone call resurrect, <laughs> are you able to leave it dead? Are you able to leave to anything that happened in 2020, to leave it dead? Are you able to? Are you able to, when, like I said, when that phone calls come, when that itch comes, when, when those habits come back, are you able to leave it dead? If it resurrects today, what will you say? What you say is the difference between staying in the boat, staying in 2023, mindset staying in 2023, and, or coming out. What you say when it calls. What you say when that thing resurrects, right? When Noah came out, the land was barren. Imagine, this flood happens, the land is barren, right? There's nothing around. What would you, I would, oh, Jesus, what are we going to do now, right? Who going to fish? Who going to build the stuff? Who going to, what if I get a, who going to stitch me up? Like, there's so much that has to be done. It's, it's, it's a one family here now, right? It was a whole world of people. Now it's one family, right? What did Noah do? He built an altar. Though he was confused, he built an altar in the midst of the confusion. What is that saying? That we must worship in the midst of our confusion. If we don't get it, if God removed us from that relationship, and we say, God, we go, I'm going to leave it dead, I don't understand why you killed that relationship. I don't understand why you had them fire me, God. I like that job. Are we going to leave it dead? <laughs> right? Are we going are we gonna leave it dead, right? And can we, okay, it's dead, I see it's dead, but can we worship in the midst of the confusion before that other job calls, before that other relationship comes to you in the midst of the confusion? Are you willing to trust God, right? God has moved the mountain. They came out of the boat, there's, everything's gone, right? But if I focus on the fact that there's nothing there, I won't focus on the fact that God removed it. It ain't supposed to be there. You've been praying for me to remove it, right? So I'm looking like, oh, God is empty. Oh, God, I ain't got no woman. God, I'm alone. God, but you was praying for me to free you, right? You was praying for me to, and so we must worship. We must see God. You got to go to God to see that the mountain is moved because without God, you will see, you won't realize that the mountain is moved, right? Being alone and trusting when you're alone and that alone time. But we, when we get in that alone time, we find new ideas, right? We get new attitudes. We got new ways of presenting ourselves. We get new opportunities. Because God said old things have passed away and all things are made new. Keep things new. I encourage y'all, as we're going into 2024, keep things new. In a relationship, you know how we do in a relationship. You writing poetry all at the beginning, right? Sweet nothing. Hey, little boo boo, I see you. You look good. Compliments. Six months later, it's like, get off me, right? <laughs> Some of y'all, <laughs> right? But it's like things get old. If you got that new car, right? Every time we get a new car, you keep it vacuumed out. Like, make sure you kick your feet off or you get in my car, right? That little shine wear off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? The babies get in there with the little car seat and the little cookie crumbs. You know what I'm saying? It wears the newness off. So that same car that you was excited about, that same relationship that you was excited about, right? So I'm encouraging our 20, 24, we got to keep things new. Have you ever tried to do some work in a dirty room? <laughs> it's kind of cluttering, right? You clean it up, you can think a little better, right? So in 2024, all things new. Every day, all things new. New beginnings, right? God is a God of new. After every night, he offers us a new day. Jesus offers us a new world without sin. Heaven offers us new wonders. Eyes have not seen nor ear heard 
or have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. All the things that happen to us and the people in the Bible that happen because of sin, God offers us new grace every day. So by accepting Jesus Christ, we are made new. He says we are created and we are made new creations in Christ Jesus, right? What shall it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? What shall it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? One of the most tragic things I've seen in modern history, shocking, was the death of Kobe Bryant, right? It was shocking. Like, you couldn't believe it. The superstar basketball player in a helicopter crash, right? What shall it profit a man? I, 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 I kind of studied Kobe. And, I, and if you listen to some of his, his peers, the people who played on the team with him, they said he had such a mamba mentality that he was kind of a jerk to everybody. He was kind of, you know, mean. He had one focus, and that was to be the best. But then if you look at after Kobe Bryant's career, you could kind of see he put that down. You kind of seen he was more people, like, you know what I mean, giving, more likable. <laughs> you know what I mean? When Kobe was hooping, it's like, uh, after he retired, it's like, man, he's an amazing guy. So it seemed like he kind of was trying to make up for what kind of the, some of the things he heard what people were saying about him. And it seemed like he was purposely trying to make up for some of the arrogance, you know, some of the uh, blind focus. And then he died. That was his way, his time. I just read an article with the black community, I'm sorry, is <laughs> mad at his wife. They mad at his wife saying like, yo, you got all this money from Kobe Bryant. Why you ain't giving it to our community? I wish something would happen to me and y'all tell my wife what to do with the money. I, w I wish, <laughs> right? But that's what we doing. So what? And so now she's stressed. Now it's transferred. What shall it profit a man? Gain the world and lose his soul. And hell, I, I heard somebody giving, give a testimony of, many people give testimonies of hell, the torture that happens. A lot of, if you, if you look at it, what they're saying is what your sin was on earth, what your vices was, you was a shooter. Man, I'm sorry for the picture. They say in, in hell, that's what's going to be repeated. You're going to get your head shot every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be, if you was doing these sins, it's going to be that times 100. If you was in sexual sin, it's going to be that time, like, to where it's not, hey, that's not pleasure. That's not pleasure. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's torture. So the, the things we dwell in on this earth, it's going to be given back to us. So in hell, you will be mocked about the old. In heaven, we will have everlasting revelations of new things. So as I close... <laughs> As I close, y'all, man, I appreciate y'all. One more time, y'all say, all things new. All things new. One more time, y'all. All, all things new. All things new. In Revelations 21. Revelations 21. 4. It says, he will wipe away tears, every tear. Right? He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. So in 2024, new relationships, new mentalities, new ways. We have an excuse now. Everybody tomorrow going to be like, I'm going to the gym, right? Everybody got an excuse to be new. Let's take the opportunity and walk in it. You feel me? So all things new in the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for y'all. I mean, if we could just, let's just stand up, y'all. Let's just pray real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. But I'm going to do the song. It's called Bow My Head. And uh, I just, well, I ain't just, I did this. <laughs> but I put it out. And uh, I just performed it on ABC. I just did a show on ABC called Claim the Fame. 
And um, it's basically a bunch of celebrity relatives in the same house. I'm in the house, same house as Alicia Keys, brother, Eddie Murphy, daughter, Dolly Parton people, Tom Hanks, and we all um, living in the same house for like a month. And we're competing for a hundred thousand dollar prize. And um, God gave me the victory, man. So it's, it's <laughs> it, I mean, go watch it. It's on Hulu. Like it was aired on ABC, but it's on Hulu. It's ten episodes, but. You know, one of the things I did think, because I'm, I'm, I'm on ABC, right? And it's like, man, they're going to get mad if I say Jesus. You know what I mean? Before I even went, these things was on my mind. Like, I love the Lord, but it's ABC, Illuminati, or whatever. Like, and I realized the whole way through, I'm mentioning Jesus. Every challenge I won, I'm thanking Jesus. And I realized that person that I thought was going to tell me to come, hey, man, you know, you're doing a great job, but can you not mention Jesus too much? I realized that person don't even exist. They don't. That's it. That was in my head. Like, and we put these blocks in front of us and these things in front of us, and, and, and it's not real. God has already made a way for us. So on ABC, they allowed me to profess the gospel. They purposely edited it to make not to because Jesus did it but it was obviously I was a believer they didn't try to hide it they had scenes with me laying down read my bible and like I said that person don't exist so in 2024 all the hindrance all the doubts in our minds all the yeah but they don't let Christian no 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 we was created by the creator we supposed to be the best creators so all of those ideas you know what I'm saying <laughs> She created a whole cycle gym, like, you know what I'm saying? Make some noise for the cycle gym. Where did those ideas come from? Like, you know what I'm saying? So all of your ideas, everything I encourage you, man, tap in and God is going to move mountains for you, for sure. We ready? Let's get it, man. I appreciate y'all. Do this track and let y'all celebrate y'all New Year's. We know y'all going to be drinking apple cider tonight. Mm, better. Let's get it. <laughs> yeah. So this song I said I, I, I wrote a few years ago, and it's just at a time, like I said, when I was leaving Hollywood, and the only thing I could do was literally bow my head. Right? Look. Look. Is there heaven for a G? Is there a section for me? One who knew the whole truth, but still played in the streets. Is there a mansion in the sky with a safe and a key? If I jump and try to fly, is that saving for me? Hunger pain, thunder rain, this little light of mine. What a flame, brother slain, bloody game. What a fame, he'll put it in his mama name. What a shame, another job in the view, man. I should've shaved. My boy robbing you, man. I should've came. All the positive dudes never make a change. All the lies that you tell never stay the same. Bow my head, let it rain. For the fact that you die, but you live again. Born in a trap, but you led the way. We can die any day, Lord, give us wings. Bow my head, let it rain. For the fact that you die, but you live again. Born in a trap, but you led the way. We can die any day, Lord, give us wings. All things new, y'all. Yeah. I just want to encourage y'all. Like I said, I appreciate y'all. Ooh, that's a good Look. So I just want to encourage y'all, bow your heads, any situation, all things are new, y'all. Look, follow you, but the storm is getting heavy and these rain boots won't move. Look, bow my head, bow my head, yeah, I'ma bow my head and send a prayer to the Lord. Without him, I'm dead. Look. So who gon' tell my mother if I'm missing? You. Who gon' tell my brothers if I'm broken? You. Follow close behind by the henchmen On our own roads that we chosen Can I really tell my wife that I'm wicked? How? Soaking in the soul of a soldier Mapping out a mind of a misfit yeah. Running to my cup, running over yeah. Frantically in a fight for my faith yeah. Falling free on the flats of my face yeah. Father, please give me facts I can face Cause the cat's out the bag and we rats in this race So amazed by the maze so attracted to the trap, so enchained to the cage, who willing to stand in the gap? Bow my head, let it rain, for the fact that you die, but you live again. Born in a trap, but you led the way, we can die any day, Lord, give us wings. Bow my head, 
Let it rain for the fact that you die, but you live again. Born in a trap, but you led the way. We could die any day, Lord, give us wings. My name is Gabriel Cannon, and I love y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all. God is good. Amen. Got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide from these temptations. Come on, let's show some some love for Brother Gabriel.